Alright, so I've seen a lot of reviews online, and when it comes to the safety features of this gun, a lot of people are just saying there are no safeties on the SIG. And that's not exactly true. Some people will explain that there are no external safeties on this gun, and that's more accurate, but no one is really explaining what the internal safeties are. That's where the four-point safety system comes in from SIG, and it took a lot of research to find this information. I searched through a lot of forums and found some kind of half-assed information, and it was actually the SIG Armor DVD that I watched that finally uh, explained this to me very clearly with a really cool cutaway shape and everything. So if you have time and you want to spend another hour watching SIG stuff, uh, go find that SIG Armor DVD and check that out as well. So the SIG four-point safety system consists of four safeties passive safeties, internal type safeties, or safety features. Those are a automatic firing pin block, a safety intercept notch, a trigger bar disconnector, and the decocking lever, which most people are more familiar with. I want to elaborate for a second on a little bit of how these work. Alright, let's start with the automatic firing pin block. Take a look at this lever coming up here. As I pull the trigger, you'll see this small lever pops up each time. And if you recall, we saw this earlier, this is part of the safety lever, one of the things that you replace if you do uh, install for a short reset trigger. What this lever is actually doing when you pull the trigger is it's depressing a little safety locking plunger, and that being pushed upwards allows the firing pin to move freely towards the uh, round in the chamber. So without that safety lever moving up, the plunger will never move up, the safety locking plunger, and the firing pin will be restricted from being able to move forward. Let's look a little more closely at this so you can see the firing pin on the back here. If I try and push that in, it, it's blocked by something. It doesn't quite go in very far. However, if I'm able to depress the plunger, the safety lock plunger, then the firing pin goes in further. If you can see it going in a little bit further, and that's all it takes to get into the chamber and impact the round in the chamber. So that firing pin won't move forward unless that safety locking plunger is pushed up, and that won't be pushed up unless you pull the trigger to make the safety lever push that up. So we'll just install it here for a second, take a look at how that looks when the gun is together. If we look at the back of the gun here, if I have the trigger pulled, the plunger will move forward farther. If it's not pulled, it doesn't move forward. So I have to pull the trigger each time, otherwise it's it's resisted by the safety locking plunger. But when I pull the trigger, then it moves in to strike the round of the chamber. So that is essentially what you're doing when you pull the trigger. Uh, that little bit of take up in the trigger in single action mode is actually raising that safety lever and pushing up on that safety lock, which is allowing the firing pin to move freely and impact the round and discharge around. So if you don't pull the trigger, the firing pin is not going to be able to move forward. So that's a definite safety feature of this firearm. Okay, next up is the trigger bar disconnector. And the purpose of this internal safety is to basically not allow the gun to fire unless the slide is closed all the way. So you'll see a little bar here attached to the trigger that moves forward and backwards when you pull the trigger. And if that little trigger bar is depressed, the trigger, uh, the hammer itself will do nothing when you pull the trigger. If you release that bar, the hammer moves with the trigger. When you press it, the hammer does not move with the trigger. What's actually happening here is inside the slide, there is a small crescent shape cut out so that the slide itself has to be in just the right spot for that trigger bar disconnector to not be forced downward. If the slide's too far forward or too far back, the trigger bar will be pushed downward and the trigger will be disconnected essentially from the hammer because that would be maybe an unsafe situation for it to be fired so it doesn't allow the hammer to even be manipulated by the trigger at all. If we take a look at the trigger from the other side with the grips off we can see the entire trigger bar we can see how pulling the trigger makes the trigger bar move back and forward and affects the hammer as well. If we cock it all the way back and we just uh, squeeze the trigger here and we release what you'll notice is that if the hammer is forward, the trigger will still again be disconnected. So unless the hammer is allowed uh, to be been cycled back again, the trigger will be disconnected from the gun until you basically get the hammer all the way back and release the trigger, 
and then it's active again. So that disconnecting bar basically keeps the gun from shooting if the slide isn't closed and everything is not properly seated. Let's look at the safety intercept notch. When the gun is at rest and the hammer is decocked, the hammer doesn't sit against the firing pin. It's about a maybe a quarter inch away or so. And that's as a result of the hammer um, and the sear and how they interact with each other. They are basically uh, get together in a groove and don't allow the hammer to move forward at all beyond the resting position. There's basically that's the notch that's cut out in the sear that interacts with the hammer. That doesn't allow the hammer to move forward beyond that resting point. So it, it can't even impact the firing pin unless you pull the trigger. If you do pull the trigger, then you'll see that the hammer can move forward, sort of slingshotting across that gap, and then it can also depress the firing pin block, because now that the trigger is pulled, the safety lever disengages the safety block as well, and the firing pin can move freely. So the hammer at rest is sitting away from the firing pin. This essentially makes the gun what people call drop safe. If you were to drop the gun uh, right on the hammer, um, the hammer can't move past that notch that is notched in and so it can't strike the firing pin. Let alone the fact that even if it did potentially say shear off that sear and impact the firing pin, it, it wouldn't move the firing pin forward at all because of the other safety which is the safety lever and the safety lock that stops the firing pin from moving forward unless the um, trigger is pulled. So these two things together actually make this uh, a very safe firearm, these passive safeties. Now when the hammer is all the way back, this is where the decocker comes in to do its job. And the decocker essentially rises a bar up towards the uh, hammer inside and kind of pushes it off the sear and brings it back down into that original first safety notch. So the decocker is essentially releasing the hammer from the sear and bringing it back into its resting position in that first safety notch. This is the only safe way to decock the firearm if the hammer's already been back. Uh, you can, if you want, um, cock the firearm by just pulling back on the hammer as long as your finger is nowhere near the trigger. Because even if you were to pull back halfway in the hammer and say drop it, it would still uh, hit that intercept notch, it wouldn't go any further. And even if it did go further, like we said already, the firing pin can't move forward because the trigger's not pulled. But you definitely don't want to ever um, decock the firearm without the decocker. So don't use the old grab the hammer and release the trigger out slowly. The problem there is now you are taking away all the safeties by having the trigger pulled and that hammer can now move freely right past the intercept notch and push that firing pin all the way in and discharge around. So never decock the firearm without using the actual decocker. But as far as cocking it goes, um, you're not going to bypass any safeties by doing that as long as your finger is nowhere near the trigger. So these are the four internal safeties, and I find them very interesting. I, I'm not brave enough to take my gun completely apart yet, but even just having the grips off, you can start to see how some of the mechanisms work, and it's really cool. Uh, something that isn't talked about very much, and that uh, adds to the safety of this gun. And then we also have that fifth, if you want to call it, safety feature or safety aspect which is that double action long 10 pound pull uh, that's a very heavy trigger in general so if you have it decocked it's very unlikely that trigger is going to be pulled and that's another safety type of feature um, one more thing I want to show you before we wrap up is um, another you can consider it a type of a safety element and some guns have a loaded uh, chamber indicator this SIG doesn't, so it's hard to remember if there's one in the chamber or not. I mean, hopefully you remember, but sometimes you don't. So one thing that I've found is actually on the extractor itself, there's a little bit of a giveaway in terms of a noise that it makes. If there is no round in the chamber and you press on the extractor, you won't hear anything. But if you cycle around into the chamber and you tap on the extractor, what you'll hear is a little bit of a clicking sound and that is essentially the extractor tapping against the round in the chamber. It's a very low click but you can hear it. If I cycle a round back out again you'll hear no click and if I put a round in you'll again hear a clicking sound. So 
Um, this is a nice way if you are, uh, say, in an area where you're trying to be quiet, maybe stealth is an issue, you want to be able to hear that clicking sound without having to rack the slide back a little bit and make a lot of noise. Or if it's dark and you can't see and you just want to hear, um, just remember, if you hear click, the gun is going to go boom. So anyway, that's something that I discovered and uh, you can keep that in mind when you're wondering if there's a round in the chamber. See if it is the same for you. I imagine it probably will be. So that's the SIG four-point safety system plus a couple other points of safety. So there is a lot of features built into this gun, a lot of mechanisms engineering uh, that just adds to the quality and craftsmanship of this firearm.